Hey everyone, Aaron Albers here. So if you remember my last couple of videos, I did one on the history of FAU Stadium and why it doesn't have a corporate name. And so I kind of went into a little bit of history of the FAU campus and say Boca Raton. And my second video was a more in-depth look at the city of Boca Raton and Florida Atlantic University and, and how Florida Atlantic University came to be. And those two videos kind of overlap. Uh, so today, I am going to be doing a video on the history of FAU football from the time it was founded through Howard Schnellberger's last game, and through, which was in the year 2011. Uh, this is going to be the first part of a three-part video series on the history of Florida Atlantic University football. So... Howard Schnellberger, where to begin? Uh, if you're big into college football or professional football or football in general, uh, Howard Schnellberger is a name that comes to mind. He was on the staff at Oklahoma and Alabama. Uh, he was on the staff of the 72 Dolphins when they had the perfect season. And his name is just the name that everyone comes to think of when it comes to University of Miami and Louisville. And this is true. So after he left uh, Baltimore Colts and came down to the University of Miami, he came down to a program that was facing obscurity and possibly on the verge of being shut down. There was talk of it being shut down. There was no real momentum of, being, of it being a shut down, but there was talk. And what he did and what he saw, he saw a place that, is ripe for championships and winning football. And what he did is he developed a staff and a group of coaches that would take basically the state of Florida, divided at Orlando along the I-4 from coast to coast, and basically seal that area off from any other coaches. And they said, this is our territory. We're going to go in and recruit these players and we're gonna call it the state of Miami. And he and his staff were very successful at this. They went into places that most normal coaches would not go to nowadays. Uh, back then, they would go into these poorer neighborhoods such as Hialeah, Opelika, Belglade, Pahokee, Riviera Beach, and recruit players from these areas and these high schools that a lot of, frankly, a lot of football power one football coaches overlooked and they were very successful at it they were especially Howard he was able to go in and to these family family homes and convince these parents these grandparents these aunts uncles whoever were watching this young yeah, man said if they're going to come for a play for me they're going to win championships they're going to play winning football if they're going to they're also going to get an education we're also going to teach them how to be men and it was that contract they had with the families that allowed him to bring in these players that a lot of Power 5 schools overlooked into the University of Miami. And even though it started off slow, he immediately had rapid success years following. And he and his staff changed the way recruiting was done throughout the college landscape. Uh, as we all know, Coach Howard Schnellenberger won a national championship at the University of Miami, and he had that program that went from obscurity into the national limelight during his tenure there at the University of Miami. That bar that he set is what Miami Hurricane fans expect every single year from their college football team. That's what the Hurricane fans want every single year. It's the, bar, it's the level that Coach Allen Schnellenberger and Jimmy Johnson set, but especially Coach Allen Schnellenberger. Uh, when he left Miami, he went to Louisville, uh, University of Louisville, where a that program was going to be shut down. They are going to give it a couple more years. He went in, essentially did the same thing. He took that program, turned it around, got brand new facilities, brand new support behind it, and developed it into a winning program. Uh, much like Miami Hurricanes, Louisville absolutely had love and respect and great adoration for Coach Howard Schnellenberger. Coach Howard Schnellberger left Louisville. He went in Oklahoma. Unfortunately, 
he said some things that upset the Louisville fan, uh, excuse me, the Oklahoma fan base, especially the big money donors. He was out after a year. So he and his family moved back down to Florida and were thinking that they were possibly done with college football for the remainder of their time. Uh, but then after spending a few years out of the limelight, Florida Atlantic University, looking to establish a football program on its own, called up Coach Howard Schnellberger and asked them to come on in and be the director of football operations as well as their first coach if they got the approval and support behind it. And they essentially asked him, we need to know if there's gonna be enough support within the community, the students, the donors, and the alumni to, for, for us to take on this undertaking. And Coach Howard Schnellberger essentially said, I will get the support. I will do this. We will start up the football program here. And using a stump that he has had throughout his entire coaching career, Coach Allen Schnellberger went about this mission, the same grit and determination that he had at winning football games and winning championships wherever he went. He went into the breezeway of Florida Atlantic University, stood on a stump, talking to the students, trying to drum up support for fo for a football program with the student base. He went into donor events, alumni events, any other events the university is with the stump and went around shaking hands, telling how Florida Atlantic was a, the right place for a college football team and bringing one will bring more recognition, more money into the university. And he was successful. There was a lot of support behind the program. So the Flo university along with Coach Howard Schellenberger petitioned the state government for allow them to create a football program on the campus because they all knew Florida Atlantic University was the right place. While waiting for the approval, Coach Howard Schellenberger and the university went about to raise the funds and interest to begin gathering the necessary equipment as well as the finding space where the team would play, practice, as well as weight train. And after winning an approval in August 2000, Florida Atlantic University Alice football team took the field for its very first practice. Over 167, 100, 164 students that showed up to try out for the team on the newly minted practice field behind the Tom Oxley Center, which at the time was the headquarters and the offices for all university sports on the grounds of Florida Atlantic University. Yet, since they were a new program and all that, they had to wait a year before playing their first opponent. Yeah, on September 1st, 2001, Florida Atlantic would take on Stony Brook University at Joe Rodney Stadium, the Hard Rock Stadium as it's known nowadays, in front of 25,000 fans. Unfortunately, because the university failed to certify 13 starters, they were not eligible for the game, and FAU lost 40 to seven in their first game of the season and as a university program. But, you know, FAU would not be deterred. They went on to upset the number 22 ranked team in the NCAA 1-2A division, uh, Bethune-Cookman. And they would wrap up their first season that year with a record of four and six. The following season though, the FAU Owls did not have that great of a season. They would go on to two and nine, but however, no one on the football team or in on campus was panicking just yet. In 2004, four, in 2003, excuse me, Florida Lang University went 11 and two, nine and two that year. Again, excuse me, went nine and two that year in the regular season, making it to the NCAA one two a championship, all the way getting all the way to the semifinals before losing to Colgate. They would wrap up that year at 11 and two. It would be the last time that Florida Atlantic University would play as an FCS independent. Because in 2004, in 2004, FAU would begin the transition to the FBS level and play as an FBS level dependent that year. Yet they would finish up the season in 9-3, but would not qualify for a bowl or the playoffs because 
other FPS transition status. 2005, FEU, now full member of the FBS and assigned to the Sun Belt Conference, began their first year in there. They were finished up the season two and nine, yet undeterred. And the following year, they made improvements to finish up the year five and seven. Yet in 2007, the Owls would end up having their best year as, as members of the Sun Belt, along with Coach Nellenberger. They would finish off they would gain their excuse me. They would gain their first victory over a Power Five school by beating Minnesota in front of twenty thousand fans at Hard Rock Stadium, as it's now known, but then Dolphin Stadium, as well as winning the conference. They would finish the season eight and four, and go on to beat Memphis in the New Orleans Bowl in the New Orleans Superdome by a score of forty-four to twenty-seven. 2008, while the Owls would not repeat as Sun Belt Conference champions, they would finish the season six and six. Usually at a group of five level, they would this would not allow them to be invited to a bowl. But that year it was different. FAU would be invited to the Motor City Bowl in Detroit, Michigan, where they would take on the Central Michigan Chippewas. The Owls would end up winning that game, a very close game, 24 to 21. Having Coach Schnellenberger extend his bowl winning streak to 6 0, the most by any college coach without a loss. However, the L Isles would finish up the 2009 and 2010 years with losing records of 5 and 7 in 2009 and 4 and 8 in 2010. Yet, despite that, something new is on the horizon for Florida Atlantic University Owls and the football team. Ever since he came on the camps, Coach Owens. Coach Howard Schnellberger was saying to students and to the football players and recruits, there would be a stadium on campus. And that was his promise since he found his team. And he would keep up that fight for an on-campus stadium. Over the course of the year since the program was founded, there would be many design renderings and many drawings uh, what the stadium would look like. And as Coach Hollenberger said, having a stadium would help propel an FAU towards the national championship, but it was a drawn out process. They had to find funding, they had to get contractors, they had to get design firms, and they had to pick a site for all this lined up. And during this time, why FAU was working on trying to find all this for a new stadium, the Owls football team would play at Lockhart Stadium after starting on the Dolphin Stadium, then now known as Hard Rock. And for many players who played on those teams then, back then, they said that playing at Lockhart Stadium was like playing on concrete during the day when it was not raining. And when it rained, it turned into an enormous mud pit. Yet the winds of fortune had changed. In 2008, 2009, FAU had finally narrowed down, was able to narrow down funding for the stadium as well as picking a design and construction firm for the stadium. It was supposed to begin in 2009, open in 2010, but delays had pushed back the opening and groundbreaking of the stadium until 2010 and the opening in 2011. So because of new dorm sites and the stadium site. So that year in 2010, FAU would open up a home game versus Michigan State in Michigan at Ford Field, losing to Michigan State. But late in 2010, FAU would finally begin construction of the stadium and Howard's dream would soon come true. In 2011, FAU would begin the unpre unprecedented task of starting the season five of the six games, starting the first five of the six games on the road before celebrating the grand opening of FAU football stadium in front of a sold off crowd of 29,000 plus at FAU football stadium against Western Kentucky. FAU would lose that game 20 to nothing, but the success of having a game on campus as well as 
showing that it could be done was a win in itself. Even though FAU would finish the year 111, it's lone win coming against UAB. FAU was on its rise towards championships and recognition. Coach Hartsenberger's dream was achieved and being a man of his word, his contract was through 2011. He kept his word and retired at season ends with the University and the Athletics Department naming Carpolini as his successor. For the first time since the program started, FAU would have a new coach for the next season. But the future looked bright for FAU, but coach's impact will always be there. Coach Howard Schnellberger came to Florida Atlantic to do a job, but he saw more. And with this great determination to start a football program, get a stadium funded and built, as well as being a voice for the athletic department and university as a whole. Because of this, the university would recognize him as through a statue uh, dedicated in the southeast cor southwestern corner at the southwest corner entrance of the coach's likeness. They would also name him ambassador of the university to go out and fundraise for the university and the athletics department. Through a campaign by fans and alumni, the field that the players now play on was dedicated in his honor. Sadly, on March 27, 2021, Coach Howard Schnellenberger, the, the bear, everyone's favorite gr grandpa, grandfather figure would pass away at the age of 87. Tributes and memories would pour in from across the sporting world, especially many former players and coaches that worked or played under him. But the final tribute came from the university called Florida Atlantic that he saw big things in. We miss you coach, rest in peace. All right, everyone, that's part one of the series. I hope you enjoyed it, and let's hope for big things this season. Go Owls.